Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be discussing the Premier League January wish list. There's only around 15 days, 14 days left to go until January uh, deadline day. So let me know your thoughts on your club or just an outsider looking in like me on which club needs what in January. So their wish list. We'll start from the bottom of the Premier League to the top. Uh, the three in the relegation zone are all on the same points. Um, but we'll start off with Southampton. What do they need um, with the last few days of January? I think their main priority is a centre-back. They like to play three at the back and quite expansive playing out from the back a bit. With Nathan Jones, and I think they need to uh, back him and bring in a few players who can fit that system with him. Um, you know, I think Bella Kopchap's a really good centre-back, but they need more depth and more players in that, in that position. Uh, they've already signed Orsic. I think he'll be a good player for them. But centre-back, for me, is their priority in January. Uh, Everton's a tricky one because I think they need quite a few players. Like a, Some some teams need quite a few players and quite a few positions. Um, I'm not allowed to say one. Um, and, and some need, you know, not players. Some need to get, get a, a manager in. Some need to, um, you, you know, off, offload a few. So it's, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, these aren't my clubs. So if it is your club, let me know your thoughts because I don't watch these clubs week in, week out because I, I, I can't. But um, so yeah, let let me know your thoughts on your club, and then if you're an outsider looking in like me, uh, let me know your views in the comments down below. It, it's always an open place to have a debate. Um, in, in staying in the relegation zone, we've got Everton and then West Ham. We'll start off with Everton. I think what Everton need is a manager. I, I don't rate Lampard. I think he's inept tactically. Um, obviously, they, they need some players because that squad isn't quite good enough. I think it's you know not. Good, not it's better than relegation team, um, but to try and get them over that line, I think you know you're looking at a couple, the full backs aren't good enough, um, so you've got to get the best out of them. Midfield, I think that it needs strengthening. I like Onana, but Gay's been off it a bit recently. Will be never rated him, and you know I think they need a couple of wingers. But in terms of what they need to get the best out of that squad, I think a manager like Shot or Sean Dyche would get them. Out, out and clear of that relegation zone with that team, I believe. And I, I think he could get them exceeding a bit more. I think he, from, from an outsider looking in, I think he would be an Everton-type manager. Um, but, but yeah, let me know your your views if, if you are an Everton fan. And like I said, if you're an outsider looking in like me. Uh, staying with a former Everton manager, we've got David Moyes' West Ham. Do they need to get rid of him? I don't think they do. I think he, he's the right manager for them to get them out of the relegation zone and to, I think, get them playing. Obviously, they brought in quite a few players in the summer and it, they need to, to gel better and some of them aren't performing. There's players who played really well last season who aren't performing. I think it's for him to sort that out and I think he deserves the time um, because he's earned the respect to do that. Um, so what do they need? I think they need a, a winger to come in to you know put pressure on Boring whose performances aren't, aren't been up to it like compared to last season. Um, and, and I look at that squad, I don't think it's got strong enough for wingers. And then, you know, if, if you're looking at maybe another player coming in, I think they could do with a backup defensive midfielder to come in, you know, a box to box, someone who can challenge Rice and Suchek. Suchek's another player who hasn't been up to it this season. Um, and if Rice goes in the summer, I think he probably will now. Um, they obviously need a, someone to come in to replace him. So I think that's a position they need to look at as well. Um, I think they're in talks to bring in a striker in and, and a couple of players, so they realise that they need to you know, bring in a few players, and I think a winger is the main priority and then maybe a defensive midfielder. Uh, Bournemouth, just outside the relegation zone, I think they are the worst team in the league, in my opinion, and you know they're doing well just to be outside that relegation zone. They, they, we thought they were going to bring in a few players in. I, I think they've signed someone or are in talks to get that finalised, a player worth £20 million. I don't know who he is, I don't know where he plays. But I think when you look at that team, I think they've conceded 41 goals this season. Um, I think they've got two competent strikers in Kiefer Moore and Solanke. And they can play a certain way to get the best out of them. But defensively, they, they, they need improvement there. And I think centre-back is probably the position they need to improve the most. But the whole squad needs revamping. Because when I look at that squad, I think it's a championship standard squad. Um, moving up then, we've got Wolves who are just clearing away and you know working their way up that table with a world-class manager like Lopetegui, that's bound to happen. Um, they brought in a, a striker in Cunha, who's more versatile, he can play um, behind a striker preferably and I think he can do a job out wide. The, you know, Podence is doing well as of late, midfielders look really strong. I think the position they need to improve the most is probably centre-back, you know, I think Collins is a competent backup. 
and Kilman looks to be getting more games and to becoming a bit more experienced. But they do need, you know, an elite centre back there if they want to get back in that top half. Um, you know, if I look at them teams in the top half, they've, they've got elite centre backs, not world class, but elite. Um, so I think that's a position that they could do with improving and, and maybe right back. I don't think Sumedo's good enough, and I think they've been playing it a young lad in in that position. So I think centre backs their position I need to look at. Staying with centre backs and moving up um, at a place in the league is with Leeds. I think they need to improve defensively. Um, I don't think they're, they're good enough left back. You know, I think Ailing has question marks over him. And I think in centre back, I know a lot of Leeds fans like uh, Liam Cooper. Is he good enough? I, I think the man who they have next to him, you know, Strauch ain't good enough. Koch, I haven't seen enough from him to, to prove that he's good enough. Um, they, they brought in Werber, uh, Werber, whatever you call him, uh, from Austrian side Salzburg. He ain't proven. Is he going to be good enough? Leeds need him to be good enough, but I think they need to bring in a solid centre back to try and show up that defence because he, he sort of handled that defence a bit better Jesse Marsh van Bielsa uh, got a bit more out of them but I don't think they are good enough um, defensively so I think centre backs probably their priority in January uh, Leicester tricky one because you know they haven't spent a lot of money recently looks like they're heading towards signing Gonzalez from Fiorentina I think he'd be a good signing for them bit of pace got a bit of trickery had a really good season last season um, this season I don't know why they haven't been playing as much for Fiorentina and their performances haven't been you know, good enough for the squad they've got. But I think he'd be a good player for Leicester. They need a winger. You know, playing all Brighton and Dios with Perez, you know, they're not good enough. And they're never going to be good enough. Um, but I think they need to bring in a winger who's versatile, can play on either side, maybe as a striker, um, you know, behind a striker. Because when Madison's out, that team looks fragile. There's no match winner in that team. Tielemans is good, but he hasn't been as good this season, obviously. If, um, if if you haven't got the players around you, your, your performances are going to take a hit. And I think a few players need to step up and play better, but really that squad ain't good enough and they could be in trouble, but they need to back Brendan Rodgers and they need to get a few signings in and I think Winger probably is the priority who's a bit versatile. Moving up to Notts Forest, not Nottingham Forest, uh, I've always called them Notts Forest, but I know now that is not how you call, what you call them. So sorry to not Nottingham Forest fans. Um, you are not Notts Forest, but um, yeah, not in um, Forest. Um, I think their main improvement this window, it, it's hard to see. Um, where did they improve? They've got loads of players. I think their main thing for this rest of January is getting out the players who they don't want or need. And, you know, just trimming down the rages, getting, you know, a better core group. Obviously, Steve Cooper's had a look at the players he's brought in and, you know, some of them are, are near the team. I think he needs to trim down that squad a bit. Um, but they've, they've just signed that Danilo who's a, a midfielder I think so they're looking to bring more players in but I think they've got a good core group of players but the players who are playing they need to get rid of them otherwise they're going to be unhappy and unsettled but not Forest, Nottingham Forest moving in the right directions um, up to Crystal Palace I think they've got a very good core squad they need a bit more depth obviously got a good manager the, the round mid table they're a very solid side but I think to improve them and to take them up a level, I think they probably need a central midfielder to go with Decore. I think Schlupp's had a decent season. He's, he's going to be a good player. So he's a solid player in that position. He's versatile. He's, he's a good squad player. But I think they just need you know that next level in that midfield to go along with Decore and Eze. They could go for a winger as well. You know Maybe Zaha could be his last season. Um, I think the move to a big club may have gone. But, you know, you're looking at Tottenham and, and an Arsenal, they could need a bit of depth, so it could go to them. But um, I, I think they do need that midfielder to take them up a level. Um, but depth is what they really need. Maybe not a necessarily big thing to, for them to go for in this January, but definitely in the next few windows they've got to be looking at improving uh, that position. Aston Villa then, Unai Emery again, a bit like Wolves come in and improve them. What do they need? I think centre-backs probably their position they need to improve. Diego Carlos will be coming back from injury, but we don't know exactly how good he is. Um, I think there's question marks over Tyrone Mings. I don't rate him. Um, you know, I don't think he's good enough for that standard. And Ezra Conzo, I think he's a good backup. So I think, like Wolves, they need to bring in an elite centre-back who's you know proven. Who's a player to play in and around that, you know, them positions just outside the top, top seven top six, you know, that sort of player the need to improve because um, elsewhere I think maybe a bit of depth here and there will help them 
but that's probably their weakness in the team, centre back. Um, we're moving on to some big clubs now who are underperforming. Chelsea, I think they what they really need is a striker. Don't know if Mudrick's particularly a striker. I think he's more of a winger. Um, you know, it has Potter brought Chip Jao Felix in to be a you know false nine striker. I don't think he has because he didn't start as that against Fulham. Um, he played behind Averts and Mount, which I think could work. There's a lot of you know movement and players who want to pick up space in that front three, but they need a ruthless striker who you know gets a touch. And, uh, you know, they just need someone ruthless as a striker who's going to take his chances. And, you know, more of a number nine. Averts missed a really good chance on the weekend. If there's, they've got a proper striker um, in that position, I, I think they, they, they would have scored that and won the game a bit more comfortably. And it's something they've needed for a fair few years now. Um, a few, a fair few players haven't worked. Um, they could recall Lukaku, but... You know, does Potter want him? Is his Potter type of player? I'm not sure, but they definitely need to be looking at improving that area because Avert certainly ain't good enough and Aubameyang ain't fancied quite clearly. Liverpool need a central midfielder. Klopp's come out and said they've got the money, he don't want to spend it, which, you know, is a big problem and it's eyebrows raised at Klopp then and he's put a lot of targets on him by saying that. Um, but that's the position they need to improve. For Fabinho aren't being good enough this season, Henderson... You know, he came back from the World Cup and he had bit played like he did for England. Um, so I think that's a big place they need to improve. Their best midfielder is Thiago, but he's always injured. Um, they definitely need depth in there, but they need, you know, a quality midfielder. You look at the teams who are above them, they've got, you know, look at Brighton, Caicedo and McAllister. They'd be brilliant for that Liverpool side. Um, you know, games are won and lost in midfield. You look at Man United last season without Casemiro. You know, Tommy and Fred weren't good enough. They, they, they weren't going to be good enough. They need, you need a, a midfield to win games. And now they've got a midfielder and they're in the top four fighting for a title race. Maybe I think it's a bit out there to say that, but definitely Liverpool need to improve there. But again, let me know your thoughts as you know these fans, because I aren't a fan of any of these clubs. Um, Brentford, what do Brentford need? Again, you get into this stage where you know these smaller teams, smaller teams. You know, Brentford, Brighton. Um, Villa, these teams, what do they need? You know, the teams that are doing well, Fulham. Um, and I think Brentford probably could do with a backup striker if all happens to Tony, you know, if, if he leaves, um, you know, if if he gets banned for quite a few games. So it needs, they, they need some backup there. They've brought in this Shade guy, um, I don't know much about him. I don't know if he's a backup striker or a midfielder, um, but I, I thought he was a striker, but it looks like he's a midfielder. So. I think the core squad again is really good for Brentford, but when you look at the depth, they need to improve the depth, and I think a backup striker is something they need to be improving on. And again, another team who's overachieving, if you like, who are playing really well, what do Brighton need to improve on? Um, striker's been there a few times, but they've got Ferguson coming through, looks like a good young striker who can improve and develop. They've got Danny Welbeck, who's scoring goals and you know playing as a really good team player. And uh, they've got Undav, I think, as, as the you know that player who came in this summer and we thought it could be good, but again, he probably needs developing. Um, so I think really Brighton, you know, what what do they need? I think they might need a winger. If Trossard goes, which it looks like he is on his way out, they need a winger to replace him. I think Solly March is good. You know, they've got some good players in them positions. Mitoma, um, maybe he can replace him. I don't know, but they, they, they do need a bit of depth in that position. I do think if they lose Trossard who, you know, on paper is probably one of the better players. Um, Fulham, again, another team who's overachieving, the small club, but they're not. Um, I think when I look at that team, I think it's a good, strong team. Tim Ream's getting old, could they improve centre-back? I think that could be a position to look to improve. Um, there's a few positions where I think, is he actually good enough? Are they outperforming themselves? Um, you know, I think Harrison Reid's a good player, but someone to play alongside Polina. Um you know, could, could Polina go to West Ham? That that could be a good signing for West Ham, and it would show ambition um, to get a player like that. But you know, Fulham need a good player to go alongside him. Or could they do with a better winger? You know, Willian's getting on a bit. They can't rely on him. I think Solomon and Dan James were on loan. I think um, they're only to it. Um, and Bobby Weed really shouldn't be playing out there. And Harry Wilson and and done all this season or hit the heights of last. So I think you know, a tricky winger, someone who's who can. You know, get the fans off the seats a bit of pace and a bit, a, a, you know, a bit young and a bit raw. I think they, they need to be looking at maybe a winger. But again, if you're a Fulham fan, let me know. You watch some more than me. 
Um, Spurs, I think Spurs need a lot of players. You know, you look at that Spurs team, it's weak. Um, it, you know, there's no, no real depth. You know, there's depth, but the, the, the depth ain't good. Um, a, a few championship players in there. I think they need a centre-back more than anything. I think, you know, they could do with a, a winger or two to come in um, and prove competition and a bit of depth, like I say. Um, midfield, I think that's a bit weak. There's some decent players in there, but they aren't performing. That's a position they need to improve. Right back, they desperately need an attacking young right back. Jed Spence came in, but it looks like there's an attitude problem there. Um, and is he that good anyway? I think Championship were good. Lower team in the Premier League could have done well, but Tottenham's a step up and that attitude, like I say. Centre back, they need three or four. I, I think, you know, Romero's a good player. Uh, Longley, Ben Davis, um, Eric Dyer, Sanchez, they're not good enough. They need clearing out. And they need, you know, a couple of world class centre backs and then, you know, a couple of elite ones to provide depth. Um, because that, that back line is not good enough for Spurs. Conte's a good defensive coach and he's not known for being an attacking coach, but his best players are the attackers and he ain't getting all out of them and his defenders are poor and, you know, they need improving fastly. So I think centre-back's the big place where uh, Tottenham need to improve. Manchester United, I think they need a striker. They've just brought in for Vagor, so that's a bit, you know, they're not going to bring him in in January, but that's the position they need. Uh, they're in talks to get Oshimen, Harry Kane and, and Sesko, was it? I think they're the three who's on the shortlist. Um, and any one of them three would massively improve them. Um, you know, maybe a winger. I think Jaden Sancho could become good and Anthony could become good. Um, but they're not proving any competition to Rashford or, um, you know, no one on the opposite side. Uh, uh, Garnacho could become a good player with development. Alanga needs to go out and run. So I think a winger could maybe. But, you know, I think Sancho, he's obviously been out for a bit, but Ten Hag's dealt with that well. Um, and Anthony hasn't hit any heights yet, but he ain't a flop by any means yet. Of course, you know, the first season always is the hardest. Um, you know, maybe a backup centre back, maybe a right back, although I think Lambasaka's getting developed and Delos come on leaps and bounds, as, as you can see. Um, but maybe a backup CDM is, is another player on the shortlist for them. Casemiro's in, you know, 30 31, he's on the wrong side of 30. You know, they need a backup for him if all happens to him, I, I think. Um, but yeah, striker's the main thing, but then maybe a winger or backup CDM is probably the more realistic thing for a January window. Um, but obviously, it do not look like they want to spend. Newcastle, another interesting one. They've got a really good course group that maybe is a bit out un uh, overperforming at the minute. Um, but maybe I think what they need is maybe a, a backup CDM. Bruno Gamares, we saw him limping off with an ankle injury. If he's out, there's no one to replace him, really. Uh, Joe Linton could drop into a midfield and play St Maxman, who's always injured. So I think maybe a winger to to brew more competition and when St Maxman's out. Um, and then I think the main problem is CDM. Um, they need a defensive midfielder who can come in, uh, prove competition to Bruno Gamares and Willock and uh, Longstaff, you know, someone who can play both roles. But they need someone who, who can replace Gamares because, like I said, if all happens to him, that midfield becomes very weak. I mean, you you could be looking at John Joe Shelby coming back in, um, but defensively they're solid, so I think that's the position they need to improve for depth. Second place in the league, Man City. What do they need in January? Nothing. I f they just need results, and they're not getting uh, the results, but they've got the team. They've got probably the best team in the world when you look at it. They've got four world-class centre-backs. Aki. Um, Aki's probably more of an elite centre-back, really. Um, Akanji's world-class. John Stones is world-class. Laporte. Um, I think on his day is world class and Ruben Diaz has fallen off a bit but he's still a world class centre back um, and there, there are maybe issues that you could look at but they've got world class players there um, they've got the best striker in the world I, I, you know maybe some would throw over names but statistically he is um, maybe they could bring in a winger or two but they've, they've got loads of options there midfield you know that team's underperforming at the minute but I think it's a bit of a classic Premier League season um, that you know the the team who you'd expect to win the league, you know, slots bit slow starters, but I think they'll get going and get some big results, you know, towards the back end of the season. And Arsenal could fall off, who desperately need some uh, versatility up front. You know, you've got Enketi, who's decent, is a good backup, um, but maybe a backup backup. I think he's mid-table, lower table, Premier League, higher Championship player. Um, so they definitely need a backup striker. But really, ideally, they need a backup striker who can play off the wing. 
because they ain't enough depth out wide and they ain't enough depth through the centre as well. Maybe a backup midfield as well uh, to provide competition to Party and Shaka. But they definitely need to improve that depth to have a good chance of winning the title. Uh, but when you look at all these, what's the chance of it happening in January? Very slim. I think towards the bottom end, you know, Bournemouth, I think they'll bring in a few more. West Ham, Everton need to, but I don't think they will. Um, I think you look at Everton, they need a few more players, but Sean Dyche, I think, is the manager they need to go for to get the best out of that squad. I think Southampton will bring in a few more. Maybe Wolves will. Um, but I think the teams who are in trouble who desperately need to bring players in. Southampton, Everton, West Ham, Bournemouth, Leicester and Leeds. They're the teams in trouble. Then the teams who need to improve the teams more, most. And then maybe top end Arsenal desperately need some depth. So let me know your thoughts. If you, know, if you disagree with me, tell me what clubs need which. Um, you, know, you can tell me all 20 clubs, but it might be a bit of a long message. But I will get back to it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And uh, like I say, if you, if you think I'm wrong, if it's your team, correct me. And if you're just an outsider like me, uh, let me know why I'm wrong. And if I'm right, um, have a good one and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.